Adults don't require fairy tales. At least not all of us do. There's something about leaving childhood behind which is easier for some of us than others. I find this puzzling and interesting at the same time. I was quite a sceptical kid and recognised quite early on that Father Christmas's handwriting was the same as my own father's and that the Easter Bunny and Tooth Fairy were more made-up strangenesses. I wasn't so sure about gnomes, though. This is because a girl in my class at school said she'd seen one in her garden, and she seemed very sure about it. There was also talk about God, angels and the devil, which I assumed must be true, mainly because adults talked about these things with an air of sincerity. I used to have to say prayers when I went to bed until I was about ten, I think. I did think it was funny that God's name was Harold, and used to deliberately get some of the words wrong as a defiant act of naughtiness. As I grew up and learned more about history, the world, and other people, I became more rational and less gullible. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? If someone is trying to get you to believe something which is false, or is trying to con you in some way, you are more likely to be conned if you are young or ignorant. So once you learn that dragons are anatomically impossible, and that men can't fly, no matter how super they are, some of the magic is lost. Some folks say we lose our innocence as we grow up, and some don't like that. I mean, having to go out and work to pay the bills and being responsible for yourself and often others is a hassle. I remember being told by adults as a teenager at school that I'd better make the most of it because school is like a holiday camp compared with the world of work. I also remember being told that teachers really care about the pupils and that this would change. Lecturers and employers were only interested in their salary and couldn't care less about students or employees. This I found to be wrong. In every walk of life, from school through college to work, there are indeed some who are more interested in making money than a difference, but there are also many who put a huge amount of effort into doing what they do well and being helpful. Anyway, in the adult world, it still surprises me how many people are into astrology, conspiracy theories, pseudoscience, fundamental religion and other stuff, which is such obvious nonsense. Astrology irritates me particularly because of my interest in astronomy. Most newspapers and a lot of magazines have daily horoscopes which could mean just about anything to anyone, and even on BBC Radio 2 in the afternoons, they regularly bring in astrologers and people phone in and send emails and make important life-changing decisions on the basis of which parts of their orbits the planets are in, as if it makes any damn difference. I worry about the future of our species when more of us are interested in horoscopes than the basics of astronomy. I've noticed that in any newsagent or supermarket which sells magazines, Astrology publications outnumber astronomy ones by about 5 to 1, so I think it's safe to conclude that more people are concerned about nonsense than reality. I really wish Steve Wright in the afternoon could replace the astrology with an astronomy spot. He has had Professor Brian Cox in a couple of times, which was great, but such episodes of sanity and reason are few and far between. There is a saying which goes, you are what you eat. Similar logic could come up with, you get what you vote for, as long as you're in a democracy, that is. This I find slightly alarming because I like to think I'm reasonably well informed and vote for whichever party is most concerned with the long-term survival of our species, but it's hard though, hard to figure out how to vote, and I think that more people are swayed by personality and the charisma of the politicians than their policies. I don't think there is a huge difference between one political party and the next these days, and it dismays me when nearly all of them say that we need to consume more to get out of the current recession. I'm not an economist, but I fail to see how consuming more finite resources more rapidly will do anything other than make the situation worse in the long term. I've been too busy working to have got involved with the Occupy movement, but I agree with the general sentiment that the global financial economy 
is a hugely inefficient setup which is grossly unfair. I never understood why all governments and most businesses, to say nothing of billions of us ordinary folk, have to be indebted to the banks. I'm not suggesting we get rid of money, but the way things are set up so that a few people make a killing out of moving money around while the rest of us have to bail them out after they got it wrong is monumentally stupid. How did we let it get to this? As a species, we have some fairly basic problems to sort out. Thanks to labour-saving technology, we don't need everyone to be working to keep society ticking over. But everyone does need money to pay for food, clothes and accommodation. So there is a shortage of employment available and an ever-increasing demand for money. People are desperate to make money, for obvious reasons, even if it means making and selling stuff which no one really needs. I wish that more people could be employed by organisations which ensured that clean water and sufficient food be brought to every human on the planet. I also think that people could be employed to grow, plant and look after trees, particularly in mountainous areas where they've all been cut down and on desert margins. These are just ideas and I'm not sure how such things could be organised and pay for on the sort of scale I'm thinking of.